Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, October 7th, 5.33 a.m. Central Time. As I speak here, December corn futures up one and a half at 6.77. November soybeans up three and a quarter at 13.61 and a quarter. December Chicago wheat up eight and a half at 8.87 and a half. December Kansas City wheat up eight and a quarter at 9.73 and a quarter. December spring wheat up 10 and a half at 9.73. If you guys are listening on the podcast, as always, really appreciate it, guys. Leave me a rating or review on that Apple Podcast app if you wouldn't mind. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're getting real close to 7,000 subscribers. I think we should do it this month. Uh, Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. If you've got crop updates, yield updates, uh, basis updates, given this uh, river situation, drop them in the comments. Those comments help YouTube to help me to grow this channel. Always appreciate it. It. If you guys would like some additional information from me, visit my website, www.standardgrain.com. Sign up for my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of, charts, graphics, weather info, all of my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. Sometimes I go off topic. Uh, I do talk about the grain markets like every minute of every day. Every once in a while, I'll throw kind of like a story type deal in. So this week, I had to give my parents some investing advice. And uh, I told my subscribers essentially what I told my own parents when it came to investing. Uh, there are some parallels between like the way I think about investing and the way I think about uh, grain marketing as an example. Certainly some differences too. But if you guys are interested in this sort of content, most of it is grain marketing related, I promise. But uh, sign up today, 50 bucks a month, no other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. President Biden said yesterday that Putin's nuclear threat is the biggest such risk since the Cuban Missile Crisis. Biden spoke in New York yesterday. The president said this. We have not faced the prospect of Armageddon since Kennedy and the Cuban Missile Crisis. For the first time since the Cuban Missile Crisis, we have a direct threat to the use of nuclear weapons if, in fact, things continue down the path they've been going. Putin was not joking when he talks about potential use of tactical nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons because his military is, you might say, is significantly underperforming. Uh, so Biden is concerned about this. This is stuff I've been talking about for weeks. Um, the concern for the moment here involves the potential use of what they call tactical nuclear weapons. These are more like short range devices that would be used on the battlefield. There has not been nearly as much talk about what they call strategic nuclear weapons with long range capabilities. Uh, Biden commented on that though. He said it makes little difference which type of nuclear device is used. He said, I don't think there's any such thing as the ability to easily use a tactical nuclear weapon and not end up with Armageddon, he said. Um, so this, uh, as I believe it should be, was actually the top story in a bunch of different news outlets this morning. This was the top story on Bloomberg, NBC News, also in Reuters. Guys, I'm aware that uh, Biden's approval rating is low. I'm aware that uh, many of you, and, and myself included, don't necessarily agree with everything that he says. I believe he's correct here in uh, his concern regarding the nuclear situation. And why am I leading off the, the grain market show with this? Well, it has drastic implications uh, for agricultural markets. Uh, they ship a lot of wheat out of the Black Sea. They used to ship a lot of corn out of the Black Sea. Uh, Russia is a huge supplier of fertilizer uh, to the world. And if for some reason there was a nuclear exchange and those supplies were disrupted, it would be uh, a real mess. And the fertilizer situation is already a mess. So yeah, there's some impacts uh, uh, definitely or could be if if, if this happens uh, to you guys in regard to agriculture, uh, not to mention the the humanitarian uh, catastrophe and that sort of thing. So this is uh, something that is finally in the news where it should be uh, at the top of the uh, news wires here this morning. Low river levels on the Mississippi River have likely impacted the grain markets negatively, at least in my opinion. There is little doubt, uh, I think, that basis levels have been negatively impacted at locations near river terminals and elsewhere, probably. I'd probably argue at this point that futures and future spreads have also been impacted, especially in the soybean market. Soybean spreads uh, on the board have widened to levels that most people, myself included, never thought we'd see this year. The largest U.S. barge operator, that's Ingram, declared force majeure and will not be able to make good on many deliveries. Another barge company, American Commercial Barge, said that this is the most severe impact to river navigation since 1988. 
Bloomberg estimates that 60% of all grain and soybean exports out of the U.S. move toward the river through the Gulf. The timing, of course, is especially bad as harvest grain deliveries arrive at elevators. A lot of people would argue that export sales are now being impacted as a result. Uh, there's not much relief in the forecast. We could use some rainfall, and uh, it's really not there. I'll talk about weather here in a second. Uh, but speaking of the export situation or implication, uh, sales of U.S. corn and wheat in particular were not good last week. Corn sales totaled only 227,000 in net. USDA noted some cancellations. Wheat sales totaled only 229,000 in net, also included some cancellations. Soybean sales were okay at 777. China bought only 157,000. That's the second lowest seasonal print for China of the last 10 years. So China's buying like next to nothing when it comes to U.S. soybeans, uh, which is not necessarily a good thing. So, yeah, I think the river situation is is maybe having some impact on export sales as well. Brazil's government projects record corn and soybean crops. Uh, CONAB, which is Brazil's USDA, released initial crop estimates for the uh, 2023 corn and soybean harvests yesterday. The soybean crop pegged at a whopping 152.3 million metric tons. That would exceed uh, the previous record by 9.2%. Uh, the corn crop in total pegged at 126.9. That would exceed last year's record by 9.4%. So uh, no surprise here. We're looking for some massive crops in Brazil. Weather, of course, needs to cooperate. U.S. drought continues to expand and at a pretty rapid pace, really. U.S. winter wheat areas experiencing a drought now total 63%. Back in late May, that number was 49%. U.S. corn areas experiencing a drought now total 44%. That number was 19% in late May. U.S. soybean areas experiencing a drought total 41% versus just 10% in late May. So here is this week's drought monitor. And a lot of this drought has moved into these like uh, central areas of the country, the western corn belt, even some of the central corn belt, into the uh, south, southeast, even some areas. Uh, here's a comparison. So this is this week, if you're watching on YouTube, this is uh, this week's drought monitor on the left. And on the right here is May 31st. And you can see like all these areas. I mean, th these areas like Iowa, um, Minnesota, I mean, Missouri down into, you know, Arkansas, those places had very little to no drought uh, at the end of May. And now a lot of those areas are very much drought stricken. So this remains a big problem for a number of reasons. We've got the river issue, which is obvious. Uh, we've got winter wheat areas that are drought stricken. And if this goes on long enough, yeah, it could impact row crop production next year also. There's not much rain in the forecast. Uh, there's just like scattered stuff across the country, but not any big sweeping system that's going to uh, alleviate this drought really in any material way. If for some reason the forecasts were wrong and some of this tropical stuff in the Gulf made its way up into the uh, lower Mississippi uh, area, that would be a good thing for the river problem, I think. But that's not what is being forecast here this morning. More private groups out with U.S. corn and soybean production estimates yesterday. Well-followed group IHS market pegged the U.S. corn yield at 171.2. Uh, they were 172.5 previously. USDA is currently at 172.5. The group pegged the soybean yield at 49.9. Uh, that's pretty low. One of the lower estimates out, out there, uh, down from its previous estimate of 50 and a half. USDA will have its October crop production and WASDE report out Wednesday next week. Uh, that's the 12th. Uh, those production numbers, U.S. corn and soybeans, the yields, uh, total production numbers, those should be your big ticket items in that report. The cattle market yesterday was um, uh, live cattle were mixed, feeder cattle were lower. There was some cash trade reported 144 to 148. We'll see what happens today. Uh, the U.S. dollar is a little bit lower this morning. Stocks are mixed. We've got bonds down. Crude oil is up $1.04 at eighty nine forty eight. So that uh, OPEC decision to cut production is absolutely having a uh, an impact on the market. It's rallied sharply. Everybody have a uh, wonderful weekend. I will talk to you guys Monday.